Deputy Owen Murphy, six minutes, Deputy. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Seal. Um, just a couple of brief questions. Um, it's one thing to, to feel pressure as a journalist or to uh, believe that something has been implied um, or for something to even be implied to a journalist. And it's another thing for the journalist to actually act on that. Do you have any specific evidence of a journalist um, changing what they were going to write or report based on a threat, either specific or an implied threat? By property interests or something like that? By any interests. Well, again, it goes back to the, the Shane Ross and the article. Uh, it, but do, do you have any evidence yourself? That I, well, my evidence is, is this that I read. I mean, I, I, um, yeah. Any information that's been given to you or from your research directly interviewing people yourselves, journalists, for them to say to you. Journalists. That, yeah. That, look, I, I am sure, but I don't, I can't give you in relation to the housing bubble. I don't remember like a specific one like right now, but uh, I relied more on that study that was pretty good, I thought. Okay. Yeah. But your own study in terms of your own discussions with journalists or investigations into how journalists can be affected by uh, elites, yeah. you don't have uh, an example of that happening? A case? Uh, no, not that I remember. But again, the point is not that every journalist every morning are called by Sheriff Fitzgerald and say, hey, mm -hmm. you better report properly. It's not that. It, for the same reason that in a political party, the leader doesn't have to call every member every day to say, hey, you better vote like us. They understand that. They're part of the institution. So it's very much uh, understood. And if you don't understand that as a journalist, you won't be lasting very long, I think, in the, in the main media. You're uh, talking about implied yeah. rules of the game in the profession. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, you believe that ownership of media impacts upon editorial decision making and media coverage. Mm -hmm. Do you have any evidence of uh, a media owner interfering with an editorial decision or reportage by a, an organization in the media? Uh, on top of my head, no, but again, again, an owner will hire people who are like-minded, so they don't need to call them every day and interfere that's the whole point of it. If you had to interfere with your editor every day, you wouldn't be hiring him. Why, why don't you waste your time on that? So you'll hire people who are so, like-minded. Uh, can we understand by that then that uh, editors are not independent or are not independent-minded? That they're there to parrot the views of their owners? It's not, yeah, I understand what you mean, but it's not really the way to, 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 uh, to put it. The way to put it is that there will be an alignment of interests um, of people working in the organization with that organization's interests. Uh, if that's their views, you can say they're very independent and they made their own views that they're not constrained every day. Okay. So, so a business owner leads to a, an editor with business interests or interests in terms of reflecting the business community or a certain uh, industry in a particular life? Well, something like that, yeah. So, so if we look at then different types of ownership, if we look at public ownership, state broadcasters, yeah. Yeah. Do we then say that the state broadcaster and the, the persons in charge and making decisions there reflect the government point of view? Yeah. But again, would that stand up, though, to scrutiny if you looked at coverage on, for example, RT of the government over a, a whole range of issues? Absolutely. Uh, look at the housing bubble. The government had an interest in sustaining it. I mean, that's what they did. Look at prime time, never talked about it. But if that's you look direct at, correlation. If you look at the government trying to achieve certain policies, yeah. um, you will see governments, uh, representatives will see politicians on TV every evening being challenged by RT on the radio or on TV yeah. as to those viewpoints and, and challenged robustly. Yeah, that's a I good... Mean, to the point that it undermines the government. Yeah, well, that's a good question because, we, I mean, again, there's challenge and there's challenge. If uh, you ask only about the tactics, okay, we all agree on austerity, but I'm going to challenge you on your spending cuts. I, w I wish we raised taxes instead, or not that cut, this cut. That's not a real fundamental challenge. It's like the U.S. military wondering, are we going to invade Iraq with air force or with grounds, uh, boots on the ground? It's a very tactical debate among elites. No, it's but, uh, not a fundamental challenge. I don't think it is. I mean, I, I, sorry, it's not for my position to disagree, so I, I can't go there. Yeah. Um, just a final question in relation to other forms of ownership. And the other one that we'd be familiar with, of course, is trusts a trust yeah. owning uh, with the organization we have it with the Irish Times. Yeah. So uh, how are we to understand that a trust has an influence over an editorial decision making when a trust is made up of a number of different people? 
Yeah, well, again, the trust reduces a bit the commercial interest. <clears throat> so uh, the Guardian in England is also like that. Uh, again, it's not the only uh, factor, so it, sometimes it doesn't correlate like perfectly. Uh, maybe you could say, and that's a bit more speculative, the Irish Times uh, is more um, liberal on social issues, perhaps, and that you could link it maybe to the fact that it's a trust. But again, it's one factor in the whole uh, range of factors. If you want to have a drastically different media organization, the alternative media shows you a very different example. That's easier to contrast because it's less small. But just to clarify, you're not implying, like, you're not implying that because the Irish Times might take a socially liberal point of view on something, that it is, um, that its ownership is a better model, that it's not influenced. Are you making a correlation between its political viewpoints and then throwing a conclusion that, therefore, it does not have, I suppose you want to say, negative influences on how it is edited. No, I'm just saying that if you have a less commercial, uh, profit-driven um, political economy of an organization, you, will, you would expect uh, viewpoints that are less in line with uh, you know, the corporate communities, let's say. But there's other factors that could cancel that or could reinforce it. So it's not like, a, it's a bit of a picky dynamic. So we, again, if you want to have a clear opposition in two systems, alternative media versus the normal mass media, that gives you very different views. The other ones, the trust or not trust is, is a bit smaller differences. Would you think you would, would, I, I need to round up the... Thank you, John.